So this is a new new update on chat GPT. So today we'll be releasing this the desktop version of like ChatGPT AI. and the refreshed UI that makes it simpler to use, much more natural as well. The special thing about GPT 4.0 is that it brings GPT 4 level intelligence to everyone, including our free users. And today we're also bringing the desktop app to ChatGPT. We have also refreshed the we're UI. Listening. We know that these models get more and more complex, Safari. but we want the experience of interaction to actually become more natural. They so badly want to own Google, they won't even use Chrome. They use Safari. Easy and for you not to focus on the UI at all, but just focus on the collaboration with oh. ChatGPT is really shifting that paradigm into the <laughs> You guys, I'm having a really hard time focusing on this because she continues to smack her freaking lips. Why did they hire this lady to speak? Future of GBD 4.0 reasons across voice, text, and vision. And oh. with these incredible efficiencies, it also allows us to bring the GPT-4 class intelligence to our free users. This is something that we've been trying to do for many, many months, and we're very, very excited to finally bring GPT-4.0 to all of our users. Oh, God. Today, you can also use vision. So now you can upload um, screenshots, photos, documents containing both text and images. But where will those photos, screenshots, documents live? Where will they go? Where will they go? Who will own them? Will they just get recycled for machine learning purposes? And you can start conversations with ChatGPT about all of this content. You can also use memory, where it makes ChatGPT far more useful and helpful because now it has a sense of continuity across of all your conversations. And you can use browse where you can search for real time information in your conversation and advanced data analysis where you can upload charts or any information and it will analyze this information. It will give you answers and so on. Why are they so insistent on creating soulless content no one wants? I get that machine learning can benefit people in terms of efficiency. I still think we're at the very early stages where we've yet to see how it can positively help humanity. If the answer is investors' money, it's a vicious cycle. Exactly. But you can't even search previous prompts yet. Who's coming up with these product features? I'm ignorant to that. I'm not sure. But um, machine learning just sounds like a dumb concept. Well, that's actually what this is. This is machine learning. It's not AI. It's not technically AI. This is actually machine learning. That is the proper, proper term. Yeah, in terms of helping people, if if you're not creative, then how is it going to make your product better? Especially content creators, podcasters. I'm doing a live demo and frankly, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Can you help me calm my nerves a little bit? Oh, you're doing a live demo right now? That's awesome. <laughs> Just take a deep breath and remember, you're the expert. here. I like that suggestion. Let me try a couple deep breaths. Can you give me feedback on my breaths? Okay, here I go. <laughs> Whoa, slow down. <laughs> go a bit there. Mark, you're not a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Breathe in. <laughs> for a count yet. of four. Okay, uh, let me try. So Mark, you've been working on these capabilities for a while now. Can you tell us a bit how it's different from voice mode? Right, so if you've used our voice yeah, mode experience audio before, you'll notice a couple key differences. First, you know, you can now interrupt the model. You don't have to wait for it to finish your turn before you can start speaking, and you know you can just butt in whenever you want. Second, the model is real-time responsiveness. So, the, God, honestly, this seems like they hired an actress for the AI. Well, yeah. What do you want? They, you want somebody? Hi, Mark. You're gonna die now. Sorry, Mark. You're breathing. You gotta let your brain do that for you. What do you want from them? That means that you don't have this awkward two to three second lag before you wait for the model to give a response. And finally, 
the model picks up on emotion, right? When I was breathing super hard there, it could tell and it knew, hey, you might want to calm down a little bit. You're kind of running a little bit too fast. So, you know, it really has that capability across the board to perceive your emotion. Pretty good. Not What's up? Sense. So my friend uh, Barrett here, he's been having trouble sleeping lately. And uh, I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. Oh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Yeah, a little bit. Can you yeah. end the story, um, but do it in a singing voice? No. <sighs> no. And so i found no. another robot no. friend. No. And they live circuitly ever after. Thank you so much. <laughs> No. I definitely feel a lot more relaxed. Oh <laughs> I don't feel more relaxed. I do not. I'm all ears. What math problem can I help you tackle today? So I'm going to write down a linear equation on a sheet of paper, and I'll show you. And then I'd love your help working me through it. But importantly, don't tell me the solution. Just help give me hints along the way. It does a demo where it helps the kid with a math problem in a different video. Great. We don't need a parent. Let's let the robots do it. Okay. Got it. Teachers, hmm, there's a reason we've been underpaying them for so long, because we're just going to let the robots do it. Oh. Okay, I see it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't show you. Tell me the solution, just help give me hints along the way. Got it. Oh. Okay, I see it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't show you yet. Just give me help <laughs> along the way. One second. <laughs> Whoops. I got too excited. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. I, I got to say, that's kind of creepy because it really sounds like somebody's on the, the other side of that wall, not on camera, listening and with a microphone like, <laughs> oops, I got ahead of myself. Crazy. So, ChatGPT. What equation did I write down there? Ah, I see it now. You wrote down 3x plus 1 equals 4. Yep, Let's exactly. Work... So what's the first step I should take to try to solve this? The first step is to get all the terms with x on one side and the constants on the other side. So what do you think we should do with that plus 1? Okay, I'm going to try to subtract 1 from both sides, and then I'll see what I get. Great idea. Perfect. Now, what do you get when you subtract 1 from both sides? Okay, so ChatGPT, this is what I ended up with. How does this look? Spot on. Now you've isolated the term with x on one side, and it looks like 3x equal 3. What do you think we should do now? Giving people more tools isn't problematic for now. It's still going to be a final resort because it isn't always the best option. This helps people with distant parents and who may not readily have access to their teacher at any given moment. Yeah, but you're assuming that everybody has the money to access the technology that allows them to access these tools. Yeah. I don't have a problem with any of this. This can be a low-cost alternative to tutoring help when teachers aren't available. A lot of public libraries have computers and tablets for public use if someone can't afford the tech at home. Yeah, I'm going to... I like your optimism with that, but... <clears throat> when people from disenfranchised communities a lot of times aren't even aware of public services available to them. And even when they are, there's sometimes a, sometimes there's a collective shame which people experience from using those services uh, for trying to better themselves or better their lives or their situations. Um, there's also getting there, the access to a library. If you already come from a disenfranchised place, if you have absent parents, if you don't have a great support structure, there isn't a lot of initiative to find yourself at a library, especially in America where everything is a sprawl. Children can't just walk into a library alone. They can't just walk to a library from their home. These things are very difficult in... And it takes, this is why it shows me that a lot of these tools will benefit people that already have, they'll benefit people that already have a structure more than they will benefit the people that could use them the most 
or uh, have their lives changed for the positive the most. Buses are cheap. Walk, bike. You're not. I think you guys got to clean your ears out. We're talking about children. And if the argument is helping people give people access to tools in free spaces, kids cannot. It's difficult for kids to get access to a bus. It's difficult. Not every kid has a bike. Again, walking, that is not always an option. When I say urban sprawl, we don't have social cities. Our social structures, our, our, our societies, our cities are built in an antisocial matter, in an antisocial way. Everything is spread out. So as an example, where I grew up, if I wanted to walk to my public library, it would have taken me over an hour. Do you think it would be safe for a child to walk over one hour to get to a public library? No. CPS was called because I was at the library alone as a kid. <laughs> Point right there. Point. You're thinking about the U.S. is going to change the whole world. Well, I'm thinking about the U.S. because that's where I'm from. So I'm using my own lived experience, of course. But also think about other places in the world that might have certain urban designs similar to America. People that don't have access to these things. Which is why, again, I go back to, or I think it'll benefit the the minority of people that are actually at an okay station in life rather than actual minority of people who don't have access or tools to public services available to them. A real-time translation. Mark, you want to try this one? Sure. Yeah, it? let's do it. All right. yeah. I, I um, speak Italian, so oh, we can okay, just cool. do English let's Italian. Let's try to do English Italian. Sure, let's do it. Yeah. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's cool. your day going? I'm uh, doing great. So I would like you to function as a translator. I have a friend here who only speaks Italian, and I only speak English. And uh, every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfetto. <laughs> Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders she if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci come risolviamo le equazioni limiari. <laughs> Sicuramente, sì. <laughs> Certainly, yes. <laughs> Great. It looks like it works. <laughs> All right. So the next People think AI is scary. There's a way for us to add fences for it so it can't have specific thoughts and actions. It's like how you can't generate a bad image but have free reign over everything else. Um, let's say in a commercial context, for sure, what the the... The tools they're giving to the larger public? Yeah. Definitely. Oh, um, yeah. But what will governments have access to? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, come on. Which is another, which goes back to, let alone the bureaucracy, like, Let's just talk about creativity. Like the people who have more will always get more. Uh, if we're talking about studios, maybe like the people that bid the highest. It's, it's how things have worked forever. Um, the the translation thing isn't that impressive to me. The most impressive thing about it is the fact that you can interrupt it. Um, that's more impressive to me than than the translation because I've been using this Google Translate app for years now, and before this was free. I used to pay for one when I would travel um, that did the same exact thing that Google Translate does. So let's say I'm watching a new video on chat GPT 4.0 live on Twitch with my chat. Estoy viendo una nueva video en el chat GPT 40 en vivo en Twitch con mi chat. Like, I've been using this, so. Hi there. I'm calling on behalf of Joe who recently received a new iPhone from Acme Telco. But, um, oh, got it. When did Joe the receive really the new quiet. iPhone? iPhone was delivered two days ago. Cool. Could you share the order number with me? 
Of course. It's 10293849. Great, thanks. Is the device physically damaged in any way? No, there's no physical damage. It's just not turning on despite trying all the basic troubleshooting steps. Bomber, um, would Joe prefer to return the iPhone to an Acme Telco store or ship it back? Shipping it back would be the best option. Could you please provide the shipping information and process to get a replacement? Absolutely. Awesome. All right, I've just sent the email. Can you check if Joe received it? We'll check right now. Please hold. Sure thing. Awesome. Hey, Joe, could you please check your email to see if the shipping label and Great. return instructions have arrived? Kidding, of course. <laughs> That's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? Don't. Well, it's for a software Don't. engineering role, but AI. I just need to know, do I look presentable, professional? Well, Rocky. <laughs> it's going to get so PC that it that someone's going to ask a question like, do I need to lose weight? Well, I don't want to tell you how you should look or appear. Oh, uh, do I look presentable for this date? Well, you know, as long as you're comfortable, but I didn't shower for 10 days. Well, that's okay. You don't need to shower if it makes you feel good to not shower. <laughs> You definitely have the I've been coding all night look down, which could actually work in your favor. It's never going to be just that way. Run a hand through your hair or lean into the mad genius vibe. Your oh. enthusiasm is what's no. really going to shine. Tell him to brush his hair, put some gel in it or put some mousse in it. Put on a real shirt, not a t-shirt. He's interviewing for a job. So I don't know. I wouldn't say that I'm scared of AI capabilities. Obviously, it's very strange and interesting to see all of this machine learning technology roll out to the masses. It's very easy to compare this to the movie Her when you hear this cheerful female voice talking back to the host presenting this um new 4.0 not point oh, just 4.0 excuse me so i'm not uh i'm not i would never say i'm, uh, I'm scared of the technology I'll, I'll probably find myself using it as well uh, at some point i think we all will um in some capacity or, or another and a lot of us have probably without realizing it as well um, what i am more concerned about is the things that we've addressed several times when we've uh, read about and watched other videos on new AI or machine learning technology, and that is what happens with the information that we share, what happens with our personal information that's used to sign up for this, these services, uh, you know, what happens to actual humans who will lose their jobs, and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of regulations in terms of, like, uh, stopping monopolies from happening, and the amount of money that's being poured into machine learning or, or if you want to call it AI technology is massive right now. It's skyrocketing. So it's not it's not about stopping it. It's more so about how will it be regulated. And I haven't heard enough about how it will be re regulated. And I think it will be a struggle. And I think who has the most will will win in this situation. Interesting times for sure. This doesn't nothing that I saw here is really so super exciting to me because it's all stuff that we've kind of seen coming. If you've followed machine learning technology at all, uh, this kind of stuff isn't that great. I think the thing that just piques my interest the most is the ability to cut off the machine from speaking in mid-sentence. That's interesting to me. It just means that the technology is getting better. What's going to be scary is when the AI gets sophisticated enough so they are the ones writing phishing emails and doing outbound scam calls. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure there are people are already working on that. I'm sure that's already been implemented is what I should say. It's the the amount of money being raised and put into machine learning technology is absolutely unparalleled right now. It's crazy. The next big tech bubble to burst will be a with AI. I don't think that will happen for a very long time. What I foresee happening is a lot of the larger companies just buying the smaller and interesting and innovative companies. I don't really think it'll be a bubble that gets burst anytime soon. But